Good day to all of you. Uh, we are students from Rachana Sansad Academy of Architecture and IIT Bombay. Uh, we are part of a team called Team Shunya, which is participating in a competition called the Solar Decathlon Europe. And we have an agenda of uh, trying to increase the awareness in the entire country about green buildings, about responsible energy use, about energy efficiency. And that is the reason why this workshop is being conducted. So, uh, we'll just quickly go through our project of building a solar powered house which is sustainable and cost effective. So, uh, starting with a bit of information about the competition. So, the in, uh, a few facts about the competition. Uh, it's, it's a competition organized by the United States Department of Energy. It was started in 2002 in the USA and it has been held biennially ever since. The objective of the competition is to design and construct a fully functional house powered by solar energy. So, we are not just designing the house in concept, we are actually going to build a full life size house. It will be a full scale model uh, complete with all systems which are functional and people are going to, 4 to 6 people will be able to live in it. This house will have a lot of features which we will get into uh, and this competition has the objective of trying to prove that green buildings can be sustainable, feasible and using university students to provide the necessary innovation required for this. 20 teams have been selected from across the world and we are the first Indian team to ever be selected in this competition. So not only is it the two colleges that are being represented, it's the entire nation which is rep uh, being represented in at uh, such a scale, uh, at the international scale for the first time. So, uh, the evaluation criteria for this competition are, there are 10 different competitions, 10 different contests within the entire uh, competition and that is why it is called the Solar Decathlon, representing 10 contests. Uh, these, these are quite comprehensive in nature. You can see that there is architecture, engineering, efficiency, electrical energy, comfort conditions, house functioning, communication and social awareness, urban planning, innovation and sustainability. So, the competition is very broad, very comprehensive, it looks at all the different factors involved and it tries to make uh, have a complete balance between uh, what uh, an ideal building should be like. So, the, these different criteria enable us to come up with a design which is, uh, which is complete in all senses. Uh, right, so what the competition, the version of the competition that we are participating in is called the Solar Decathlon Europe 2014 and it is being conducted in uh, France uh, in the premises of the Palace of Versailles. The houses, uh, what each team does is they construct the house in their own campus over a period of 18 months and then they disassemble these houses and transport them to the competition site. So finally in June, July 2014, each of the 20 teams from various parts of the world will bring those houses to a common location, reconstruct them over there in a period of 10 days and have a lot of public uh, uh, people, local people come and visit those houses. So, and we'll, we'll be explaining what features we've used, we'll be showing the technology and they'll be able to actually f uh, get, a, the f get the feel of a real green building. So that's the uh, objective of the competition sort of achieved. Uh, not only is this about the different, uh, uh, the different students, it's about building an international scientific community you will be able to see in your screens uh, the different countries from which there are teams uh, who, are, who are participating in our version. So there are teams from, a lot of teams are from Europe naturally. There are also teams from Asia, North America and South America. And around 600 students are just part of the competition from 41 different universities, 100 faculty members are there and 500 industrial partners. So it's an entire ecosystem which is being represented and created. I will just show you a few pictures from past years to give you sort of a feel of the competition. Uh, this is one of the houses. So the houses are constructed by students themselves, there is very, very little uh, professional involve, involvement. Uh, these are some more houses and you can notice the solar panels on the top and the unique shapes. And these are what the, these are just a uh, few houses, 
how the interiors look like. So, they are quite uh, comfortable, they are quite modern. Uh, right, finally, coming to our project. So, uh, as Team Shunya, a collaboration of IIT Bombay and Rachna Sansad Academy of Architecture, the house that we are building is called H0 and the project is called Project H0. There are over 70 students and 10 different faculty members who have been working since January and who will keep on working till June, July. We have chosen the name Shunya because we want to A, bring about, uh, give a reference to the one of the largest contributions that India has made to the world and secondly to represent a net zero energy house, Shunya for zero. And finally, what our objective is, is to come up with a sustainable and affordable house in the Indian context for the Indian middle class homeowner. So, uh, we have actually restricted our focus on a certain segment of the population keeping in mind that this is the segment of the population that requires the most amount of houses in the coming uh, 20 years and where the most of the energy demand can possibly be offset. Hence, our house, the various different features, the designs, they have been uh, created keeping in mind that the uh, end user will be an average person. So, that is more or less what the mission is all about and we are trying to achieve this by bringing about a sort of a pressure on the building industry. Uh, we will we'll try and get a good narrative going in the entire nation and if the building industry feels that the, yes, there is enough interest and yes, there is a lot of scope for green buildings, then definitely we hope that they will take some action. And secondly, we want to raise awareness in the nation about energy efficiency, responsible energy use and the potential of energy with focus on solar energy. So, uh, this, this is actually something which has been brought about over the past few, past five lectures that you have heard and the entire point of the workshop. If people get the discussion about energy going, then there is a lot of scope for moving forward and that is again our mission. So, I will now hand it over to the architecture team to talk about a bit more about the same. Uh, so, coming to the target group, uh, the first, the most important question that we had to answer was uh, who are we catering to and who is our target audience. So, we, we carried out a lot of studies and uh, we tried to study the GDP of our country. So, uh, studying the GDP rate and uh, uh, looking at the other uh, aspects of it, we realized that uh, the country is proposing a lot of infrastructure projects in order to keep the GDP at a constant rate and also along with them uh, planning to uh, get into the manufacturing sector. So, we, we studied uh, one such uh, project called the DMIC. So, coming to uh, the population that we are looking at to cater, uh, we, we did a lot of studies on uh, the urban population and its growth. And as you can see that by 2030, we would uh, the urban population of India would become 590 million. And uh, uh, talking about the McKinsey Global Report, uh, it talks about two uh, categories specifically called the seekers and the strivers whom we are catering to. And uh, they have a family income of 3 to 15 lakh. So looking at uh, an uh, approximate affordability of five times your annual income, our house has been uh, costed at 15 to 75 lakhs. So we are directly looking at impacting 115 million households with the uh, product that we will produce and that represents almost 35 percent of our urban population. So coming to the urban planning, uh, one major uh, factor in, uh, in the Indian context was to look at the land cost and what we realized is that uh, in uh, metros and in the inner city cores where you have all the opportunities for job uh, that are created, it is uh, the land costs are very high. So we are looking at uh, essentially peri-urban areas where the land costs would be low so, which will overall reduce the cost of our house and make it more affordable. The most important criteria of the competition is design innovation itself. So, we, we are looking at creating a house which is multifunctional uh, so that we in, in less space we can uh, add more facilities and give more functions. Scale and standardization was an important factor to reduce the cost. Uh, electricity, sewage and water which will be locally um, uh, managed will also uh, help in uh, reducing the cost and also uh, help us creating a better urban scenario. And uh, what is uh, the highlight feature of our uh, design would be the transit-oriented development. Uh, what transit-oriented development means is that uh, 
all your uh, infrastructure uh, that is being provided would govern uh, the movement of uh, goods and will uh, will will uh, facilitate the logistics of our uh, planning so what happens is that uh, if you have a good uh, transit uh, development you you can uh, reduce the distance between the working and the work and the uh, living areas and ultimately you reduce the cost of energy in the city uh, as i had spoken before about dmic it's the delhi mumbai industrial corridor uh, this is the golden quadrangle quadrilateral that has been uh, proposed and uh, this is uh, these are the uh, national highways connecting the four major cities of the world now along the western arm of it uh, has been proposed the delhi mumbai industrial corridor which is uh, essentially a manufacturing uh, sector that india wants to venture into to keep our gdp rate uh, at 8% so uh, what uh, it starts from mumbai at jnpt uh, jnpt is the jawaharlal nehru port trust which is very close to mumbai and it ends at delhi so uh, jawaharlal nehru port trust is also uh, this is jawaharlal nehru port trust and it is clo uh, closer to uran which is our site here now another project which has been proposed is the navasheva link which will uh, using which you can come from uh, may from main mumbai to navi mumbai in almost 10 minutes so it also reduces the travel time and keeps the two cities connected at the same time also the uh, international mumbai international and uh, the second mumbai international airport has been proposed close by so as a result uh, uran became a very important site to look at uh, to propose our township uh, studying various models of uh, town planning we realized that a polycentric city would help where each center would be a self sustainable center in terms of the amenities in terms of commercial areas and, and residential areas so the idea was to create a live work play kind of an atmosphere and create a, a sort of a village within the city um coming to the cluster plan that we have developed for our uh, for our project so this is the plan of one uh, of one building where we would have three apartments and uh, and uh, yeah we would have three apartments and along with that we are planning uh, urban farms so that you can even produce uh, your food where you live so not only that it adds some green areas vertically to the city but uh, also uh, reduces the transportation cost of uh, uh, food of for daily need items these are some of the views of uh, the final product i'll hand it over to sayuri for the architecture part the prototype that we're going to be constructing is actually going to be on the top floor of the cluster mainly because we want to show the integration of the solar pv panels with our design uh, we were inspired by vastu shastra so vastu shastra became one of our concepts what we decide what we uh, tried to achieve was that we tried to take the scientific uh, principles of vastu shastra instead of just the religious uh, beliefs uh since when we when we started designing we didn't really have a site context as such so we took the four cardinal directions as our concept or our, or or as context and we designed accordingly so our zoning is done so on so forth what we later realized is that solar passive principles and the scientific principles of vastu shastra correlate which also made our zoning uh, and our plan easier to design coming to the plan the entrances from uh, the eastern side we've created a small buffer space uh, with and with a jali over here to prevent uh, direct visual access into the house since we're considering a 70 square meter space for a family of 6 modularity was very important so the living room became one of uh, became a multifunctional space it's it becomes user defined uh, and uh, it changes uh, with modular furniture according to the time of the day so during the day you have it uh, it works as a living room and during night uh, with modular furniture it gets converted into two bedrooms on the east side on the north east side we've given a study so you have diffused light a good diffused light coming in from the north and from the east on the south east side we have our kitchen on the southwest side we have our master bedroom mainly because uh, in the afternoon when the sun is at its harshest uh, on the southwest side the master bedroom or the bedroom will not be occupied so thus uh, the heat won't really affect uh, the occupants this sort of became a solar passive strategy the brief demanded that we have a handicap toilet which we have provo provided 
On the northwest side, we've provided a utility area, mainly because uh, the southwest winds that come in, they'll take the humidity, collect the humidity and leave, and they won't enter the house. Uh, we have also planned a roof garden, which works with the solar passive principles, and uh, it basically cools the house down. We're using traditional plants like tulsi and elements like uh, jali in our elevations to sort of create a very traditional touch uh, to, in our design. These are some of the um, sections and views, and how um, the family room will be converted into a bedroom at night, uh, so which showing the modularity. Again, elevations, and this is a view of the of of H naught. Thank you. Uh, from the architecture, from the discussion uh, carried out by the architecture team, you see, you might have observed that we have tried to keep in mind whatever principles have been mentioned in the workshop so far. Uh, in the first half of the workshop, we were, we talked about solar passive architecture, and we also talked about choosing the right materials, choosing the right. So, uh, architectural and solar passive strategies to cool down the house to a large extent and then once the house is uh, at a point where it consumes the minimum amount of energy then you put in the technological uh, then you put in the various different technologies and try to bring it down further into the positive side so uh, now giving I'll uh, try and give a bit of a brief view about the technical aspects of the house so firstly since this is not visible the mechanical team uh, we have different dif uh, sub teams within our team so the mechanical team uh, they're doing a few innovations one of them is a solar oven uh, like rangan sir mentioned in his lecture uh, having appliances powered by solar energy is a big area where technical innovation is possible another innovation is in the hybrid ac we are using a much more efficient ac as compared to regular split acs and also we are trying to use hot water to sort of meet the requirements of the house as far as possible uh, so this uh, the title is not visible but it's a structural uh, component so uh, firstly we've chosen the structural materials and components on the basis of the following criteria cost environmental impact and then again ease of construction in house and finally availability in the indian context since our house will be built for the indian middle class we wanted to use locally available materials and also biodegradable materials or recyclable materials so that it's sustainable so that is those are the criteria that we chose to make the building actually a lot more sustainable in line with whatever we have mentioned so far uh, it will have a load bearing steel frame with prefabricated panels so the frame will the steel frame will actually tolerate all the load from the roof and all of those areas and the uh, panels will just be easily f uh, fit onto the uh, frame and those will have good insulating properties uh, finally something that we have done so far is we've completed the structural analysis we've completed a design uh, identifying criteria uh, critical loads and selected the materials already and we've already also made some innovations in the wall panels to provide thermal comfort next is the uh, photovoltaic solar thermal and electrical aspect of the house so the house that we are proposing will be powered by solar energy yes but it will also be connected to the grid so at times when the sun is not available the house draws electricity from the grid and when there is excess energy available from solar panel we feed it back into the grid a simple model uh, we have a 5 kilowatt peak pv system and we've decided to go with monocrystalline cells with high efficiency along with a solar tracking system so what a tracking system is essentially using some mechanical uh, elements like a motor and some uh, nuts and bolts and some arms what we do is we move the solar panel as the with the in the same way that the sun moves across the, the day so when the sun is on top the solar panels face uh, almost on top during the morning and evening when the sun is setting the solar panel is moved accordingly to face the direction of the sun so that maximum light can fall on it and the output is maximized we also have utilized solar thermal collectors which will be providing hot water again we reducing as much electricity requirement by using renewable solar technology we, we might uh, we're thinking of using some dc appliances like has already been mentioned to improve again efficiency and uh, with regards to the electrical uh, component we have already completed the wiring design of the house uh, and it was again a great learning experience for the team 
now finally once these active systems are in place to finally go that extra step the uh, instrumentation team is creating a home automation system so what this is it's a system which has some controls some uh, microprocessor which acts as an intelligent controller in which we'll be uh, creating and loading algorithms so the house will be automated to some extent all the different appliances will be talking with each other things will be optimized and it will also lead to an additional amount of utility to the uh, home owner so the house owner will be able to control his television or his computer or the other washing machine other appliances from a simple uh, software which can be accessed from your mobile phone from your smartphone from, from your console so that system we are designing again uh, like was mentioned as uh, in the previous lecture we're trying to match the solar generation to the pv pre, uh, grid peak uh, and also trying to implement demand side management algorithms uh, and this will also be used to sort of give the user a good experience in interacting with the house and make take that extra step in making uh, comfort available to the user and finally simulation this is also something that we have actively done to sort of predict the performance of the systems we are designing so using software which has already been mentioned uh, by nayak sir and dhiren uh, vajapati sir we have uh, we have done those simulations passive solar architecture analysis daylighting analysis cooling heating load all of that we have done and come up with an uh, or are trying to come up with optimum design so uh, not only is the house uh, fit with solar or and other good technologies we have also sort of studied how those technologies work with each other and how the integration happens finally a bit of a perspective about the project uh, through a timeline so we have 18 months that we'll be spending on this project uh, it started in january so we are almost halfway through the construction of the house will begin in october and uh, we should be we should have prepared a first uh, model by Uh, uh by the beginning of january and the final competition is in june july 2014 now uh, coming to a very important part which is something that we wanted to uh, use this medium to uh, sort of communicate is the motivation and it is primarily the desire to make a change we want to sort of contribute something which actively affects the nation in a positive manner we have identified energy and housing to be important problems that need to be tackled at the earliest so that 20 years down the line we are not stuck uh, stuck in a bad situation and so that we can maintain our growth rate so uh, a few bunch of students got together and they had this desire to make this change and we are making it happen and uh, this is something where that we would like all of you to ponder upon and maybe think uh, we think that you can also do something similar this is the first time that we are participating in this competition of such scale and magnitude so we definitely motivated to test our ability also the aim of our team as as has already been told is to increase awareness about green buildings among students and academia and catalyze green building research on campus and finally a major motivation is a learning experience to help us grow at a personal level also the uh the amount of interdisciplinary interaction that we have uh, had exposure to in this project is just tremendous and we just very fortunate to get such an opportunity uh for more information uh, there are some uh, different access mediums through which you can reach us if you uh, if you feel that uh, we are doing something good and if you'd like to get in touch with us you can contact us you can keep yourself updated through what is happening and very importantly the moodle platform that has been set up through this workshop we would very strongly encourage you to use it to generate some meaningful discussion about green buildings about uh energy use about the energy scenario of the nation and since we have such a wide uh wide range of people involved and uh, brought together onto one platform we feel that it's such it's an excellent opportunity for us to get something meaningful out of that discussion that's just what we want and a final word is that if you really think that this project is very good that you can uh, support us by spreading the word that's all that we ask from you uh, if you like our effort then
try and adopt those sustainable practices in your homes in your campuses and tell people about it tell people about the different things that you've learned in this workshop and we would consider our uh, motivation behind it achieved finally uh, thank you we hope this was informative you spent 4 hours on a saturday morning so i hope you all enjoy it uh, thank you we'll now go on to the interactive session